Hey everyone, welcome back to another Iron Man from Scratch video. So in the last episode, we finally checked off one of our key goals, unlocking the Kingdom of Miscellania minigame so that we could gather some additional passive resources. With that now ticking away in the background, it's time to power on forward and continue unlocking as many useful pieces of content as we can. I've got a few upgrades in mind today. In particular, I think it's about time we set our sights on Lunar Diplomacy to unlock the fourth and final spellbook for the account. Let's get cracking. Since we're on the topic of spellbooks, what's your your favorite spell book or specific spell in the game let me know in the comments below as a newbie iron man i'm really getting more attached to high alchemy as time goes on always nice to start off on a positive note and there's 46 herb lore to get the ball rolling for today even though i haven't had much time to actively play over the last few weeks i've still been trying to pop on and just knock out a few farming contracts and birdhouse runs just to keep the progress ticking over so i was thinking we'd start today off and try something a little bit different and have a crack at taking on the hespori boss now i have actually no idea if we're strong enough to take it on yet but we're going to find out by the old-fashioned trial and error method the Hespori is a mid-level boss introduced along with the farming guild and it drops a few different bits and pieces but of particular note are the three unique seeds those seeds being the Atis seed, the Kronos seed, and the one that I have no idea how to say, the Eazor, Eazor seed, something like that. We'll go with that. These seeds give various buffs to your farming patches around the game. Increased yield from the Atis seed, decreased growth time for the Kronos seed, and decreased chance of disease from the Eazor seed. You can only plant one of these at a time in the special farming patch in the farming guild just next to where the Hespori cave is. It also has the unique drop the bottomless compost bucket which is super helpful for quality of life because it allows you to store one type of compost in a single item and on top of that it actually doubles the amount of compost that you put into it so you only have to gather half as much compost in the future. Okay so since our melee gear is probably our best defensive gear that we've got at the moment I figured I'd go with armor to defend against the range attacks and then protect from mage against the mage attack and we'll see how we go. Now one thing that can be quite helpful is bringing a weapon change to darts or a blowpipe if you have it, that way you can quickly kill the four flowers around the corner, but I'm not going to bother with that for now, we're just going to see how we go running around and smacking things, I think it's going to be pretty tough regardless. Yeah, having to go through two swordfish just while doing the first cycle of plants is not looking too promising for our chances here I must say. Okay yeah, it looks like we weren't quite ready for this challenge yet, unfortunately the Hespori is hitting a bit too hard, we're close but I don't think we're going to get there. Okay, yeah, we're definitely not going to get there. We just stand in the special attack and forget to break free. Well, let's give it one more go and see how we go. It felt like on the first attempt that the range attacks were really piercing through, so I tried switching it up and protecting from range and using magic resistance armor instead, but let's just say it still didn't quite work out, so we're going to have to bench the Hespori for now. Well, given we were just humbled by the Hespori there, I figure it's time we get a bit more progress going on and let's work on upgrading some of our gear a bit further. We've got our Berserker Ring from a couple of episodes back, now let's work on imbuing it to get a bit more strength and accuracy bonus out of it. There are two ways we can go about it, one being Nightmare Zone, but I think that's a bit slower at this stage since we don't have many bosses unlocked and our combat is still quite low, and the other way is to use PvP Arena points. So from the PvP Arena, we can actually buy these imbue scrolls, and we can get the points just by participating in battles. Now of course, if you enjoy PvP or are good at it, you can come in here and take these fights seriously and probably get the scrolls a bit faster, but if you're someone like me who's not exactly the best at it or doesn't play much PvP, PvP, you can just come in here and sort of suicide a few matches, throw the specs out and try to get a cheeky kill, but you get points for losing anyway, so you just want to grind it out for a couple of hours and you can get your scroll either way. Okay, we're back after a couple of hours of suicide scrolling. It took a bit of time because I was playing sort of off-peak hours, I think, but we got there in the end and we can now grab our scroll of imbuing. Now we can just use our scroll and our berserker ring and we now have an imbued berserker ring. Plus eight strength bonus, <laughs> literally just doubled the strength bonus. That's one upgrade down, let's keep going. If you're a fan of more strength on your items, then don't forget to drop a like on this video. It really helps me out and it's greatly appreciated. Let's be honest, everyone wants more damage. Of course, still trying to keep up with our hourlies and whatnot wherever we can, and there's another hunter level just slowly working its way up in the background. Tears of Guthix, another handy task to keep on top of, especially early to mid game. Not exactly my best performance on 118, but let's see where that gets us. And two rune crafting levels. That's not too bad. We'll still take that <laughs> painfully close to the next level as well. Just short. Oh well, we'll get that eventually. Actually, just before we get back to progressing a few other things, I noticed when I went to Tears of Gothics now that we're pretty much out of games necklaces. Luckily, we got plenty of sapphire jewelry from Temporos, so I'm just going to quickly enchant a few more of these and just restock our teleports. Right, we're all done there. That should last us a while. The life of an early Iron Man, though, happened to enchant all your own jewelry until we get a jewelry box in the player owned house. That's why we play the game mode though, for that sense of self-sufficiency and satisfaction, right? Okay, our next stop is going to be back to the Haunted Mine to complete the Lair of Tarn Razor Lore mini quest, which will let us strengthen up our Salve Amulet. 
It wouldn't be an Iron Man from scratch video without a couple of little detours. This little tunnel here, I believe, opens up after you finish off the Haunted Mine quest, which brings you straight back to where you mine the rocks for the salve amulets, and in here, we can mine ourselves a Mithril Ore for a diary task. Hard task for Mauritania complete. Ah, the infamous Tarn's Lair. I must say, it was a little bit scarier back in the day when we didn't have these convenient light blue boxes telling you where death awaits. Okay, so the boss battle is pretty straightforward. We've got our Iban staff, as we do for pretty much everything these days, to blast away. The first form can use magic on you, but if you walk up to melee range, he's only going to use melee, so we can just protect from melee. The terror dogs use melee as well and blast away. Well, I certainly overcompensated with the supplies there, but you know what they say, better safe than sorry. We're also just going to kill a terror dog real quick, which would be another diary task. There we go, medium diary task complete. I'm not really sure how that's medium and mining the mithril ore was hard, but <laughs> we'll take it, it is what it is. We also got a slayer level there, Ashley, off the tarn kill, which I forgot to mention before, but that's 42 slayer complete as well. Okay, so now we can take that Tarn's diary that we just got from the mini quest, use it on our salve amulet, and get ourselves an enchanted salve amulet. That'll give us 20% bonus attack and strength when using melee against undead monsters rather than the 16.67% it was on the original amulet. Okay, we're back in Relica and our next stopping point is going to be the Fremenic Isles quest. I was completely oblivious to it as a kid, but just another example of classic Jagex humour in the island names. Nay it's not and ya it's so as in no it's not and yes it's so for the two bickering islands. It was a good little touch. While we're here, we can make a Fremenic shield for the Relica diary task. Okay, never mind, I lied about that. I'm uh, treading on thin ice. I really hope the melee prayer turns on when we get off the bridge here. Oh, oh god, the range prayer. The range though, the range. 3 HP, run, please. Oh, okay, okay, I think we, we made it out. We just got by. I was hoping the guards would keep them distracted, but it was not to be. Okay, this time we can make the Fremenic shield as part of the quest. And there we go, a hard diary task in the Fremenic area complete. <laughs> Hey, 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 whoa, hold up there. I swear there were no hit splats on me just then. Wait, I've got the recording. <laughs> run the tapes, run the tapes. I'm pretty sure I just got robbed there. What the heck was that? Well, despite the trolls and Jagex conspiring to take me down, we managed to get back to the Troll King, take him out, and that is going to be the Fremenic Isles complete. And with that, we have access to the Helm of Nayotsnot, which is going to be one of our best-in-slot pieces of gear for quite some time to come. Not only does it have some solid defensive bonus and a strength bonus, it also has a prayer bonus on top of that. So a very handy piece of gear all around, and not to mention it's super cheap and accessible because we can just rebuy it from Mornus here for 50k at a time. Also, let's not forget to mention that we just got 54 attack at the end of the quest there as well. We threw the bonus XP into attack because we're pushing for 60 to start using our Dragon Scimitar. Now, we can't use the Helm of Nay, it's not just quite yet. We're going to need 55 defense, but that'll just be something to work on in the background. A bit of sand crabs here and there. The Helm of Nay, it's not is essentially just a better version of the Berserker Helm, so we can sell that back to the shop now and get ourselves a bit more GP in the pocket, which is pretty handy because we just spent a fair bit on the Kingdom of Miscellanea. Oh, we got a little plot twist here. We've got a crafting level from this birdhouse, right? <laughs> Rather than the typical hunter level, we'll take that. Every level counts. Well, we're on a roll now, so let's just keep this momentum going. There are two more big ones I want to get out of the way. The Slug Menace for Proselyte Armor, and then of course Lunar Diplomacy. <laughs> Another really big quest, and that'll give us the fourth and final spell book, the Lunar Spellbook. And the convenient thing is, both of these quests actually have a decent little chunk in the middle that overlaps with each other, so we're going to complete them in parallel, or a section of them at least, as well as a few other things along the way, <laughs> as usual. So we've started up Slug Menace, and as we swing through Arduin to get to Witch Haven, we're going to start up Eagle's Peak as well. Then we're going to use the Necklace of Passage up to the Outpost, and guess what? We're going to start another quest here, making history. Then from the Outpost, we can run up to the Kandoran Hunter area, where we can continue Eagle's Peak and get a couple little diary tasks knocked out of the way. First of all, catching a Copper Longtail for an easy diary task, and then mining an Iron Ore at the mine just south of the Piscatorius Colony for yet another easy task. Now we're just going to duck back down and continue on with the Eagle's Peak quest up until the point when we have to leave this area and just grab our feathers on the way out. And now we're back to Ardoin to continue on with Slug Menace where we were before that detour. So either I lost the footage or I forgot to hit record and let's be honest the latter is probably more likely. So I haven't got footage of where I got up to on Slug Menace but essentially we continue the quest up until the point that we have the runestone carvings which you can see in the bottom of my inventory. Then the next step of the quest requires us to go to the mine altar as well as the elemental altars, but we also need to do that for lunar diplomacy. So this is where we take a pause and then begin up the lunar diplomacy quest. That way, when we go to the altars in a little bit, we'll be able to progress both quests at once and just save ourselves a few trips. A small tip if you are lower level trying to kill the Suquas for the quest, you can safe spot them from behind the tree here just next to the bridge with magic or range. 
And now we've reached the overlapping part between Slug Menace and Lunar Diplomacy, where we need to go make the Lunar Staff at the altars. So let's get to it. So the Mind Altar is only required for Slug Menace. We'll knock that one out of the way first, and we can do a little diary task while we're here as well to make a Mind Tiara. Hey there, it's your friendly neighborhood Iron Man here to let you know that we've got another detour. Since we're swinging through Edgeville anyway to get to the Abyss for Lunar Diplomacy and Slug Menace so that we can go visit the Elemental Altars, we might as well finish off Evil Dave's section of RFD as well while we're here. So I grabbed some stews from the Sears Village pub for Evil Dave's part of the quest and it turns out that there's actually a diary task here which I wasn't aware of so now we're accidentally multitasking as well. Very nice. Okay, we've got our recipe for the evil stew. Two brown, one red, one orange, two yellow. We got pretty lucky there. It wasn't too hard to knock that one out. Now, if I was being smart with my time, I would actually just put this in the bank and come back to it next time I swing by Lumbridge, but I don't want to accidentally lose it or eat it or do something silly with it. So we're going to go hand in the quest now. And that is another sub-quest of Recipe for Disaster complete. We are getting much closer to those Barrow's gloves now. But for now, let's get back to Slug Menace and Lunar Diplomacy. So this is why we wanted to do both quests at the same time. We have to use the Draymon Staff on the altars to make Lunar Staffs for Lunar Diplomacy. And I'm going to make a couple extra just to have them in the bank for cosmetic purposes maybe in the future. And then we also have to use the Rune Molds for Slug Menace. That way we can get them both done in a single trip rather than doubling our trips to the altars. The brain does interesting things sometimes while you're recording. In this clip I was lamenting about how we're still just short of that Rune Crafting level. But looking back on it while editing, I'm just standing there with 10 pure essence in my inventory. I could have crafted them on the spot and knocked out that level there and then. Ah well, it is what it is. Not for the first time this video, I've overcompensated on the supplies, but that's alright. That's the Slug Prince down. I'm looking forward for more quests in this series. I don't think it's been wrapped up yet in OSRS, maybe in RS3. The little parasite brain things remind me of a book series I used to read when I was younger called Animorphs or something like that. So it just takes me back sometimes. And that is the Slug Menace complete, giving us access to Proselyte Armor, but perhaps even more important than that, 200 quest points on the account. Absolutely massive. With the recent quest that came out, there's now 300 points available, so the list just keeps growing. But with that, we are officially two-thirds complete with our quest points. And now we can buy Proselyte Armor, which is pretty much our best pure prayer armor for the time being, so it'll be handy for things like Nightmare Zone or if we ever need a big prayer boost to get us through a boss fight or something. And that's now another set of gear knocked off the Iron Man checklist. That leaves us with one major task left for today, completing Lunar Diplomacy. But first, we're going to boil a bowl of water for one small favor, then grab ourselves an Adamant Chain Body just for Song of the Elves, which is way in the future, but just stocking up on supplies now. So if you are using the Quest Helper, then you already know this, but if not, it's worth mining three extra Lunar Ore from Lunar Diplomacy so that you can use them for Fremenic Exiles later on, saves you having to come back and grab them in the future. Alrighty then, we are all decked out in our Lunar gear and ready to head into the Dream World. The wiki says that we can't bring other equipment in, so I'm not sure if the Term of Fire will work or if it's just talking about the main equipment slots where you wear the Lunar items, so I'm going to test it out and see what happens. So, pro tip, you can bring the Tome of Fire into the Dream World. Second pro tip, it's complete overkill. This fight was, uh, I didn't realize it was so easy, I'd forgotten to tell you the truth. With that fight done though, that means we have finished Lunar Diplomacy, and guess what comes with that? A bit of rune crafting XP, so that small little sliver of XP that's been nagging me this whole episode, it's done now. We got that last rune crafting level. 42 rune crafting out of the way. But the real prize here is unlocking our fourth and final spellbook. Well, at least in this stage of the game, it's the final spellbook. The Lunar Spellbook, which is mostly built around utility spells to help us out around the game. That is another significant boost to the account. It's been a pretty good video of boost to the account, actually, if I do say so myself. That's a nice high note to end on. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you want to follow along. Previous episode on screen. And until next time, have a good one. See ya.